Good evening, everybody. This is Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show. I'm your host, Commander Alion. We'll be with you here tonight till about 1230 for an hour and a half, maybe two. Good to have you all with us. We had a great show last night, and I also updated all our shows. So uh, the show from last night has been posted this morning in my YouTube channel, Astro Command Spaceship News. Uh, the show from Tuesday and Wednesday night also got posted today, so you have all my shows updated. So we're completely updated in all my uh, TV programs. Thank you, Red One. We appreciate it. Hey, Chesno. Hey, brother. Good to see everybody here. I went out of body for a while earlier tonight, and uh, I seem to get taken out of body a lot, you know, and then, um, so I'm really glad to be here. For all our relatives, Cliff, everybody out there, Larry, uh, Morgan, welcome. We're doing good. And we just have a little bit of an allergy going here. This time of year in New England, the allergies are tremendous. So in the human form, the allergies do affect us a little bit. We're doing great. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Larry, uh, Jersey for life. Good to see you. Are you drained from it? No, I'm not drained. Uh, I'm definitely feeling pretty good. Hey, Susan Mary, good to see you. Kimberly, everybody. Etic. Hey, Etic. Good to see you, Etic, 1960. Uh, everyone coming in here, welcome to a show. This is going to be another great show. Last night, we had a great show, Kit Kat. Uh, our last guest was... Uh, Really, really good. We got into a brief interview. You'll see it on my YouTube channel. You want to watch last night's show if you missed it. And he's a hacker that actually hacked into government uh, things and actually provided a lot of information. It was pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, it was a good show. So we had a lot of good people. We had a woman on from England, the UK. We had a lot of good people on last night. We did about uh, three or four interviews roughly in that area. Uh, oh, good. Thank you there, uh, Chesno. And, uh, yeah, that was interesting. The guest last night, and you'll have to watch the show that Eddie's talking about. Lord J, thank you for the hat. I've sent my, I, you know, I usually add different gifts to start. Uh, we have 32 of 100, uh, subscribers. That money for the subscription will go towards our night vision equipment for our third set of night vision equipment for our C5 group. Good evening, uh, John. Uh, yeah, so I know some people might have missed uh, last night's show. Lala 2025, welcome. Everybody coming in here. Waste Beard Goddess, Martin. Just everybody coming in here, welcome to the show, wherever you are. Uh, so this show is called Encounters for New People. The one thing I love is I never assume that everybody knows who I am. You know, that's kind of egotistical, so I never assume that anyway. I feel like it's the first time I've been on here, always. Keep it fresh, you know. Hey, Tamara, 2211. John Tyler, last night was crazy. It was pretty crazy last night. Bye for us. Thank you. And that's the one thing about this show I've always found interesting, that it's always spontaneous. You never know who's going to come on. You never know who the guest is going to be. You never know what they're going to talk about in terms of the relationship that they might have towards uh, extraterrestrial intelligence or visitations, crop circles, Bigfoots, mermaids. Uh, thank you very much, Tyler. I really appreciate the, the uh, compliment on that. Hey, good. Lisa, good to, you, good to have you with us. Yes, good to have you with us, uh, Lisa. Nice to have you with us here. And um, Friends of Fairies will be back on live by the 24th. So if you're wondering where she is, she's here. Um, and she'll be back with a full audio and video privileges on the 24th of this month of March. So uh, next Friday, we'll have our special show, which is going to be our contact show, Questions and Answers with the Ashtar Command. Uh, that'll be next Friday night. So this Friday night will be pretty much an, a regular interview kind of program format and for new people coming to the show um i am host of wesu's npr pacific radio award-winning show the astro command radio show on wesufm.org worldwide wesu at 88.1 fm in the Connecticut river valley here in new england and also uh i broadcast that show on tiktok sunday mornings as well 
called the Cosmic Eye Asterisk on my radio. So if you want to listen to me on the radio, see me on the camera Sunday mornings, 1130 Eastern. Um, so a little bit of background about myself. I am from Mars originally. Uh, I came out of the closet many years ago. And Mars is a populated planet of between 10 to 15 million inhabitants currently. Jackie F., good to see you. Uh, Brent Lindsay, AACLW, good to see you. Good evening. Linda, good evening. It was good talking to you the other night on the show and hearing your story. Very beautiful. And uh, also, I work in Cosmic Christ Consciousness. What that means is I'm aligned in Cosmic Christ Consciousness. Uh, everything I do is in alignment with the highest levels of love and light. Uh, I've been doing interviews. I've been on radio since the 1970s. Uh, but I didn't start doing the Ashtar Command radio program until I was in Connecticut. And I started that 21 years ago. Will be. So I'll leave it be. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see. Hey, Gypsy, good to see you, Gypsy Tia. And everybody coming in here. So we never know who's going to be here. There's people that come and go, like on TikTok, you'll find people. Say, oh, there's a, hey, Jessica, good to see you. That'll stop in for a second. They don't know what they're watching. But if those people that are perusing the internet or perusing TikTok, as I do, see me on here, you might as well stop. You might as well stop because I know there's people like scanning to find like, something to watch on TikTok right now. And they'll say, oh, there's a, there's this guy called Commander Alion doing a show called Encounters. What's that all about? This, this is the place you want to be. This is a real talk show. People know about it. Some of you are pleasantly addicted in a good way to my program. We appreciate it, Cynthia. Good to see you, Gary Haas. Good to see you up there in Iowa, my brother. Uh, not great at wording things by force. You know, so they'll say like, oh, hmm, there's a show there. Hmm. They call it Encounters. It's on a place called TikTok. It's actually a real show. You mean they're not... They don't have disco balls. They don't. They're not running around in a clown's outfit chasing a, a cow or something in a in a room looking like it's a discotheque, with little disco lights going up and down. You mean there's an actual real mature show on here called Encounters for real people? Yeah, there is. It's right here, and I'm your host, Commander Alion. So I'm also the man from Mars. Not only that, I work with the Ashtar Galactic Command. If you're not familiar with the Ashtar Galactic Command. Uh, I've worked with them before I even had a radio show. So I'm very connected, very dedicated to what is called the Ashtar Command. And I will be for all of my life dedicated to the mission. And uh, so I know a lot of my contactees from the 60s. I had direct contact visually. I mean, I don't know if I ever went on the ship, but the cul-de-sac when I was a kid in the 60s, went up to my brother's room to make this long story short, opened the window after dinner. And there's a spaceship with windows all around it. And I see men, women, and children in a, in a light blue space outfit, beautiful, tall people, except for the kids, um, who were beautiful but small. And they were looking at me, and they were telepathic and said uh, that you're not from here. They told me that I never was from here. They said that you're in human form, but you're not from this planet. I only saw them that one time that I ever did. That was like almost like when I was a kid, they wanted me not to forget who I was. And I never forgot that story for every single year I've been alive, every single moment, every single breath I've taken. That was my understanding. I went through the normal kid's life as a human being, but I never forgot that they told me I wasn't from here. And when you're told that by people that love you, you know that you aren't from here. You always felt different from other kids, and I did. I never got, I never really was into the whole thing of being like human, the way people should be. I always felt different. I know many of you can relate to that. Growing up, that if you're not from here, from this planet, you felt different, right? Hey, Rod, good to see you. Boy, first of all, was it just people from the fleet give you a message? Uh, boy, first you're asking me a question. Let me see here. I'm going to try to catch up with your question. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hey, Rod, let's see here. Rod can relate to what I'm saying. Jersey for life. Hello, friend. Hello, my brother. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you, April. Glad to have you with us. I'm going to have another tremendous show. We always do. You know, I'm grateful, always humble and grateful. The fact that people have found our show, people are finding it. That we're educating people, that we're hearing people's stories. 
since all of last year and this year. I'm very humble about everything I do. I don't get egotistical about it. The show's growing by leaps and bounds. I'm still the same person I was the first day I got here. That's the difference between me and some other people out there in the universe or on, on TikTok or whatever. I don't like to go to my head. You know, I'm just very humble in service to my mission work. And uh, I'm just glad to always have everybody become friends with everybody and everybody uplift everybody. If you don't uplift somebody, then I don't want to know who you are. <laughs> you won't you won't last in my energy too long. You're humble and you're a very good man and an amazing space brother. Thank you very much, April. And same thing goes for you as well. And April will be back with us on the 24th coming live. She'll be able to do her own broadcasts again, which are important to educate people on the planet about the Ashtar Command, about what's going on. And then the following Friday after this, uh, we'll be doing our Ashtar Command uh, contact program. Uh, April will be on with me, and uh, and she'll also will also have interaction with uh, our space uh, family uh, on the spaceship uh, and the way they communicate right now. They they might they can visit her in Vermont in her house. That's like you know when you have your family, they can come off the ship, and there'll be days nights when they're with her, and they can communicate with her, and also she can translate the communications to me and to the audience here on the Friday night. The other thing the command does, she has a separate phone that they utilize to utilize music. Music is the message. And uh, being, being a person on radio for so many years, I played music all the time. So music is the message. They know which music to play. That'll reach people. They know how to communicate through music. And I think it's a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. Lavola, good to see you. Uh, and Linda, she'll be back on. Uh, so it's just temporary. She'll be back on. And uh, it's all good. And, you know, we, uh, the commander has figured out what happened and uh, not to get into it, but uh, it's all good. I got connections. So uh, it's all good. And uh, let's see here. Stargaze, we're good to see everybody coming in here. Ah, Lynn, very good question. So we'll get into that too. Also, I'll, I'll get into your, you're going to be the first answer that I give on that question. Um, what I would say is, uh, the first thing is we're going to do interviews tonight, of course, always. If you wish to be a guest on our show, give us a sentence as to why you wish to be here. I need to know in relationship to the show, uh, this is the rules of the show. You must be over 18, no kids on the camera, no kids at all, no smoking, no vaping, uh, no smoking at all, or whatever kind of smoking you're doing, not on the show. No drinking, no drugs, no uh, drunk people on the show. Uh, if that's more important to you, then go into the woods somewhere or go into the outhouse or whatever you got to do and do that instead. Uh, the other thing is um, no foul language. Uh, we actually like to keep the show, as I am a professional DJ on radio, I like to keep everything very positive and uh, regardless of the story about encounters of a visitation, UFO sighting, uh, if you have had um, encounters uh, with mer people, with fairies, uh, with Bigfoot, uh, we deal with all that stuff on our show. We keep very focused and no paranormal. So if you're into the paranormal, there's 10,000 other TikTok shows that deal with that. We don't deal with that here. We want to stay away from that as far as we can. All right on the vibes here. So that's pretty much the routine. Commander got the hookup. Laugh. Hey, Cosmic Christy. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you a question uh, regarding, I got to go backwards here, Lynn's question, how can we learn to communicate with them? Well, the people you're communicating with, when you communicate with them, are your, your space brothers and sisters in the general concept of that answer that are from other planetary worlds. So how do you communicate with them? And I'm sure your question is something a number of my viewers are, are probably wondering how that happens. First thing is uh, meditation. Meditation is the key aspect, Lynn, of learning how to communicate with a star family, the origin of where you come from. So if you come from the Andromeda star system, if you come from Alpha Centauri, if you come from whatever that star system area is, which everybody does, you just don't remember it, you just have to meditate and actually go within yourself and ask yourself, where am I from? You know, it's not like I'm, I'm from Paris, France, or I'm from 
um, you know, Sweden in some little village or something, or I'm from the outside of London or something, or I'm near, I'm near, I live near Stonehenge. That's not where you, that's not really where you're from. That's just the physical earth reality. So through meditation, you can learn where you're from, believe it or not. Most people don't focus on that part of it. People can meditate in general to feel at peace and feel good, but to meditate for the purpose of knowing where you're from beyond earth is a really key thing for most people. If people practice that, your question of meditation to see where they're from, they will eventually connect with their star family. And when you do meditation to find out where you're from, you have to start with the premises of, I'm a Christed being of light. When you start putting it out in the universe, I'm a Christed being of light in human form, I am looking for my star family. I'm looking to communicate with my star family. You always want to say, I will only communicate with my star family that are Christed beings of light, my star family, wherever they are in, in the multiverse, the universe, wherever you are, I'm here to communicate with you. But if you are not of the Christed levels of light, you're not to communicate with me whatsoever. So you get very disciplined in your meditation. And as you keep doing it and keep doing it, you eventually will connect with your star family. No matter if your star family might be looking at you right now and saying, it's not time yet to communicate with her. They'll know when to communicate with you. you. You'll have the communications. And so I hope that answers your question. But meditation, going within, that's your key. That's your key. That's the door to your opening to your cosmic family, to your star family. Gramps, I've been, uh, I've always smiled when looking at the star Arcturus. Adam, then you're probably connected to the Arcturians. If you can smile and look at the Arcturus star system without saying it, you just said it. See how easy that is. Uh, Alicia says, Hemi sync meditation with headphones is awesome. Let's see here. They monitor you, Strawberry Nest. The Your star family always keeps track of you, even if you're not aware of them, Strawberry Nest. So they do kind of monitor you when it's time for them to come forward and make communications with you. They will actually do that. Um, time for an encounter is flower power. Good to see you. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Commander. Hey, Winnie. You know, so hopefully that helps people. That's a great question. Tonight we'll be doing interviews with people I have no idea who they are. And uh, as April saying, they definitely monitored us in the show to make sure that we are safe. So that's another good point, which April's saying. April's been on the spaceships about nine, maybe ten times now. There are four of us here in different parts of the Northeast, and it, this is the interesting thing, just give some background. Uh, Johnny, who's a moderator, he's from New Jersey. Kit Kat, who's from Long Island, myself from Connecticut, and April, who's been on the spaceships of the command for about nine or ten times. So just to give some background, and uh, I have two. Strawberry Nest, you've been on the ships too. I'm going to have to have you on here, Strawberry Nest. Have I ever interviewed you yet? I don't think so. Oh, we're going to have to follow you, Strawberry Nest. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to bring you up here. I will bring you up as my first guest tonight. I am very excited. You've got me excited to have you on, so this is great. Um, but to let you know, uh, we're getting ready the four of us together, the three of us, the other three, Johnny, myself, and, and Kit Kat, have not been on the ship yet, or ships. Uh, we're going to be physically going on a journey soon. I don't know when it is, but we'll know. April will have the information when she gets it from our family on those ships. They'll tell us when to be ready. I'm sure they'll tell her to tell us. When that happens, and when we go on the ship, we're physically being invited onto the ship. And that will be directly, um, they'll probably be picking us up where we are. The way I understand it, they can just come right into the room and they'll have a device to bring me on the ship. I will go on the ship and in like seconds I'll be on the spaceship. I won't even be in the room. So that's what we're looking at relatively soon. I don't know when that's going to be, but I'm sure... Uh, April will have that information once they give it to her. She'll be forthcoming to me, uh, to me, um, Kit Kat and Johnny up in New Jersey or down in New Jersey. Chesno, I want to go. You know, Chesno, you're 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 in st stasis on the ship like I am. Hey, you know, never know, Chesno, you might end up going. You know, 
but uh, you never know. Um, but you're up there too, just like our bodies are up there in stasis. It's pretty interesting. But uh, I think that will happen eventually. I can't see why not, Chesno, you know. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. And we'll have people that will be recording. I mean, I actually, I don't think they're going to be able to record us going on the ship. I don't know how that's going to work. All I know is whenever it happens, I'm humble enough that I'm ready for it. I've, I've actually mentally prepared myself um, every day. It's like getting ready to go on a NASA a NASA spacecraft to the space station. You know how the NASA people, they, they're training themselves supposedly to go on on the, on the flight up to the space station and they're training and training and training every day. Well, excuse me, obviously this is not the same thing. But I am mentally prepared. You know, thank you, that young Skywalker. It was a really amazing show last night. I'm prepared now. Oh, uh, yeah, we have all the shows, Tesno, on the Ashtar Command Spaceship News channel on uh, on the YouTube. Oh, we're doing good. Yeah, I posted last night's show. Yeah, I got it on there. I posted the other two shows earlier this week. I was backlogged by three shows. All the shows are on there now. Um, and I'll answer some questions in a minute. Uh, why are UFOs showing up at native powwows? I have not heard about that. Uh, if you have more knowledge on that, then, hey, paranormal, I'm interested in hearing why. Uh, why are UFOs showing up at powwows or spaceships? I have no idea. If someone has inside information on that, I'm very interested to know. All I do know is that we are being prepped. Oh, I was just saying before, uh, um, I'm, I've been mentally prepping myself. I'm sure Johnny has in Kit Kat uh, for something we've not experienced before. And uh, when we do go on the ship, we will uh, certainly uh, give you some information as to when we know. Uh, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to bring you on right now, actually, Strawberry. I want to just share your story. Okay, so April believes that it's probably because they're connecting with other chosen star seeds around the world. So I think we're a certain core here in the, I guess, Northeast. And I would say in my, what you're just saying sounds about true, April, that there probably there's going to be others on other parts of the world, whether it be in the Middle East or Asia or Africa, everywhere that they're going to be bringing on the ship. They're probably in communications with those, those people. You know, we think about ourselves because we live here where we are. We all know each other here. Uh, but that, pro that makes sense that there would be other people around the world. Uh, that makes sense to me. I'm going to bring... Uh, I'm going to bring Strawberry Ness on right now. Uh, Strawberry Ness, I'm going to press the guest button. When I press it, accept it. Can, if you can please, if you're able to come on screen, I know sometimes I catch people, they can't come on screen, but I'd love to have you on video and um, also the audio, of course, but we can have you on both. So I'm just putting, uh, hopefully Ness is going to come on here. Here we go. Number one interview of the night, first one. Oh, I was going to put a filter on, but this a is A filter? Fine. Yeah, I don't okay. know. You mean like a background screen? Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you want to do a background screen, you come on and then you press the uh, green screen area and you can add a photo background. So if you press your thing where it says enhance, there's okay. a thing where, it'll come, where it'll, it gives you a green screen. You go to the green screen area and you can create a background for yourself. Okay, well. You want to do that okay, first so and come well, back up? My first encounter. Oh, what you, you want to bring your screen, but put yourself back up. You're now, uh, do you, you, now you guys, now? I don't see you now. I saw you, what you did before I saw you? You just put yourself and block your, yourself from being seen. So whatever okay. you did, uh, come back. There you are. Now you're good. You're good, good, good. Yeah, don't touch okay. anything. Do you see now? I can see you now. Okay. You're good. All right, I won't. Um, there you go. <laughs> so basically, my first time was it was it was weird. Like several times I've been in a psychosis state, which I honestly don't believe that it was psychosis. I I thought it was I was reaching other realms. Like I was I was in tact, like in tune to the different species and stuff like the reptile people and 
like different types of aliens. Huh. But so basically, I was having this this moment. I was at my friend's house, and and I discovered that inside of her house was like and the whole ship or the the whole house was a ship, and like there was there was a weird thing that happened with she had a lightning bowl where you collect water, and yeah. I looked at it. It fell onto the floor, and it broke, and then it came back. And I think that really? she she told me that she had a a chip implanted. In, yeah, she told me that she had a chip implanted into her back, that from that she I guess doesn't know where it's from, or she said that it was from aliens. So I think that she was the one that attracted it. So I was using this like these two wooden circles and these two two wooden like wands and yeah. i was like doing something with it i was like i was like playing with them and it it was like literally we weren't going anywhere about this time but it was like controlling the space or something really because when i when i was doing something with it lightning struck and stuff like wait a minute a let's slow down but the, that, the, the, okay go ahead you were talking about the lightning oh, striking gonna... huh you go ahead No, I can hear you. Go ahead. Well, like, when I would do something, the light would strike. Hmm. But not like the moment that I like left Earth. That's let me let me let me bring you back so up. Weird. There's a let me bring you back up. There's Encounter a bad connection with that. But I'm gonna bring you back up. Wherever you are, your connection is bad. Let's try bringing okay. you back up here. I'm going to bring you back up. Wait a minute. She's got a bad connection on her thing. Um, let me go. Let me try to bring it back up here. Okay. Let's see if we can, if she can get a better connection on her cell. Let's see here. We're bringing you back up. I just got to go backwards here and find you. You got to go. She's here somewhere. Where is she? We're going to get her back up here in a minute. Uh, oh, here, strawberry nest. Here we go. All right, try it again. We're going to bring you back up. You, Wherever you were, you're having a bad connection in the room you're in or something. So let's see if we can bring you back up again. And we'll see what happens. Try to come back up. Press the, there you go. Okay, you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, it's much better. now. Go ahead. Hopefully this is a better connection. It is. And now you can turn your camera back on. You, now your camera, well, there you go. Now you're much better. Okay. So the second time was I was having my spiritual awakening, which I basically opened my third eye. I didn't sleep for like two days. And um, in that time, I definitely heard my star family connect, like, communicating with me like about my cat my my cat that died he, they were like making sure that i knew that he was safe and everything really I, yes because like i don't know how i got these messages but it, it was like downloads basically right but um this the time that i left and i was on a, in a whole nother dimension i was in a whole mm. nother dimension like so I went to the hospital, um, but the the hospital doctors and stuff were actually angels. Really? And like, it's hard to explain. I wrote it in my notebook, but so I went there. First of all, the cops came to my house to get me because I was having like this episode and I was really concerned, I guess. And so, but the one cop, he was an alien. He he was blocking my brain. So the, so the third cop was an ET. We, we actually don't, you know, alien, we'll rephrase it because aliens don't exist, but he was an extraterrestrial intelligence. Yes, yes okay. he was. Because he was blocking my brain from being able to talk more because there was another person there and he was trying to get me to go, but I didn't want to go. And he was blocking me from being able to say what I needed to say. This was the cop, right? Yeah. Now, um, now I want to deconfuse things. 
So let me say something. Which was the good? Was there a good thing there, or was there something trying to stop the good thing? Uh, like, I felt like I was coming to an understanding, and then I feel like they were almost trying to stop me from that. Oh, they're trying to stop you from connecting with your star family? Yeah. Oh, now I got gotcha. you. I, So I, this, this, yeah, so you, you have to go by your feelings. Your feelings are more, and you're, you're very uh, intuitive about your own feelings, the, the thing you get. So this, this was not a dream. This physically was happening. Yes, this physically Really? was happening. And he, we had this understanding that, like, we both knew what we were or what he, he knew that I knew that he was one. But because it was it was so strange. And then so I got I got to the hospital and this is where it really starts to get weird. I get to the hospital and so I get taken into this room. I'm not locked up in there. They're not like Mm hmm Okay. locking. Lock in. Right. It's an open room. And they just kept taking my blood. They kept taking my blood multiple times, Huh. like a lot more times than normal. But a lady came in there and she took my blood but i think that she implanted something into me because this lady had really 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 long arms and i knew that she was a et Uh -huh. um Okay. she was extremely extremely tall and when she did whatever she did my veins started to all of my veins started to turn purple and Really? there was there was patterns on my hand when she did that Really? Um, what did you think about the lady that did this? What, were, what kind of vibe were you getting from her? it was almost like she was like an avatar person like like i was getting the vibe that she was like oh my god this it's a human like it's so cool to have a human there like that's that's the vibe that i get Do you feel like, um, now you said you were in what you call a hospital. Do you think you were really in a hospital or were you on a spaceship? I think I was on some type of of like transporting area like that. That is one of the like portals or something. Yeah, like a galactic portal. Yes. Because I get the feeling that you weren't, I think they used, like, a, you know the word holodeck, like remember Star Trek, that you go into a holodeck and brings you, Like you think you're in a specific time frame of an area it could be in the mountains or in a, a tropical island, but you're not really in a tropical island. So I'm thinking Yes. it's like a holodeck. You're, you're on a spaceship making it look like an Earth-based hospital, but yet you're not in a hospital because you're not on in a hospital. You're on a spaceship and they're, they're using something. And what was the reason for, did she explain to you what the reasons were? Uh, this tall woman, what she was doing. And you said, I find it interesting. You said you were, you think you were implanted. What happened? Uh, how'd you feel? I, I think it was, I, I, I don't know if they were trying to implant that me to me to like track me Mm hmm because I haven't had any side effects anymore from it, but I had, I have pictures of my hand when it was all scabbed, it was scabbed up. Like Really? there was like patterns on it and there was scabs. Patterns. Now, when you saw the patterns, what did you think of the patterns? Was there something like, can you explain what the patterns were? I thought that was the, uh, what do they call it? The, the Inuit or The, the I thought Inuit, it was. the uh, Inuit. Well, the Inuit are a uh, 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 native tribe, Inuit, but Oh, you're talking no. about like a... a No, go ahead. Try to explain it. I'll try to decipher what you're telling me. There, there was this thing from, um, the Anunnaki book that I have, and it was saying that they will implant these like things into people to do something, but I can't remember what it was. I thought that was kind of what it was, I'll connect but I didn't, it with the Anunnaki. Okay. yeah, I didn't know though. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was really strange that they were like doing all this stuff to me and like, that's not normal when you get, I never have that happen when I take blood. I just got my blood drawn like a week ago. They took Yeah. like eight tubes of blood and my Ooh. hand did not have that reaction.
Okay, so you went to a hospital eight weeks ago. They took eight tubes of blood from in a real hospital, correct? Yeah. This other event you were brought to, it looked like a hospital. Did it didn't feel like a hospital? Am I correct? Yeah, and you know okay. what? The hospital name was Ascension's Hospital, and I the was like, "Wait a minute." The name of the hospital, folks, listen to this. You just said the name of the hospital is called Ascension's Hospital? Yes. That was the name of the hospital? Yes. I mean, really, how could anybody, you know, look, Ascension Hospital. Now, how many people go to a hospital, get whatever they're done, and it says, welcome to the Ascension Hospital? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And when, when I was in that room, I knew that, like, I got close to them actually taking me to the other world. I mean, they took mm -hmm. me up to like the other dimension or whatever, but they were mm -hmm. playing videos of like really, really beautiful, mm -hmm. like s landscapes and stuff in there. And yeah. it was, that's all that was in the room. It was a, yeah. it was a, cam it was a recording camera and a screen that had like beautiful landscapes on it. And I was like, that's where I'm going to go. You know? So they were showing you now let, let's, Take this, everybody watching. This is Encounters. So you were taken into this Ascension Hospital, the name of the hospital. This is not the regular hospital. This was the one where the woman was there and things started, patterns were on your, your arm and everything started changing, the purple color. Now, after that happened, when were you seeing the screen? Can you kind of tell us, did that happen afterwards in the same night or the day or whatever it was? It was in the same time that I, I got taken there. So after the lady came and they left and I was there for like a day. And like I I also had stopped eating meat like months before that. And they were like testing me to see if I eat meat because I think that was one of the things that you you would need to not be able to do. I, I yeah. thought that. So that's yeah. the, the uh, screen was just playing. Yeah. And um, I'm going to say... Uh, I have a person in the audience asking a question. Down rabbit hole, what is the question? I'm going to look at this question here and I'll repeat it um, with our interview with you. So I have someone asking questions. So in this screen, can you just rephrase what, what you were seeing on the screen again for people that are just coming into the show? On the screen. When you were watching the screen after the, the your blood was taken, you were taken into this other area yeah. and you were watching a, a screen. Can you explain again what that was? So the screen was basically just land, beautiful landscapes, videos of beautiful landscapes, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. trees and mountains, and like vast open spaces. And then I fast and uh, uh, James was asking, did your hand, the hand part itch when they did this thing too? Do you have any itching or no itching at all? It didn't itch, but it started scabbing up. Like it started peeling. Yeah. yeah. Peeling and scabbing up. Interesting. So yeah. now when you moving forward, saw the screen of this beautiful landscape, do you think you were being shown something on another planet or do you think it was parts of the earth or what do you think you were seeing? I, I thought that it was the new earth that was supposed to be here, like the clean earth for everyone that's like ascending. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I believe. So they're projecting to you. In your first instinct, so I'm looking at the new earth, what the earth is supposed to look like once we ascend into the new earth. Is that that's what you're getting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long did that last for in terms of what they were showing you? So this is what happened next. Like, so I was watching the screen and everything. They took my blood and then. And. Oh, you're frozen. I was trying to think of like things that I needed. to. Oh, am I still frozen? No, you're okay. It's just uh, TikTok is lagging a little bit tonight, but go ahead. So after that, um, I was thinking about how I should be able to get the new. She'll be able to, okay, All what happened? TikTok just went. To everything. And a lady. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, do you, do you have you good cell service? Now? or Now I can hear you. Go ahead. Can you repeat what you were saying? Okay. 
So I was thinking about how I needed to get into the new earth and I was saying, I was thinking like everyone I needed to forgive. So a lady came in and she was like, oh, well, if you don't be good or whatever, you're not going to be taken by the ambulance to the new hospital. And I was like, okay. And then at that moment, at that moment, I thought of like the most terrible things that I've done. And I like confessed it to like the higher source or whatever. And then r immediately, right when I did that, a, a medical ambulance guy knocked on the door. And that's why I think that he was like the angel because he came and got me. And then I went to the a separate hospital. This is where I feel like I changed dimensions. I went to a separate hospital, but it, it was the same hospital. It was same the hospital. same as, well, like, it was like a, the same exact hospital, but like different, like, like when you walk in, all of the rooms are different and everything. And Okay, then so, yeah. uh, Go ahead. the, the, I think this is the most crazy part. Their nurse asked me if I was warm blooded or cold blooded. The nurse asked me that. So the... The nurse asked you whether warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Now, how many nurses Yes. come into in a hospital to see a patient and say, oh, I've got to ask you whether you're warm-blooded or whether you're cold-blooded? That's a pretty weird question. Yep. I know. I, I was And... like, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely in the new dimension now. Like, I was like, everyone here is ET. Okay, uh, you're... That everyone you're... there was ET. So the woman that asked you this, was she like the same nurse as the original one that was there? Or was this a different nurse? Was it different? So this was a different nurse. She was, yeah, she, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, was she, was this nurse, Can you hear me? uh, yeah, I can hear you now. What was this nurse like? So her eyes were like, like, they looked like snake eyes. Snake eyes. They looked like snake eyes. Like they were very, like, they were very blue. And I even told her after that, I was like, I like your eyes. And she was like, thanks. Huh. Um, what was her vibe like? What was her vibration like? What did you feel from her? Like, I got the vibe that she was, I couldn't really tell for her because she was a white, she was very older. Um, I She was was thinking older. maybe she was a, like, like, like maybe like a vampire. Ooh, that's not good. Was Yeah. she, uh, are you now? So you, now there, were you not yet in contact with the positive ETs? It sounds like you're being taken by beings that want to do things. But uh, can you, do, were you able to see any difference so far yet? Are you getting to a point where, wait a minute, there's something going on here. This, all this stuff is happening to me. Were you able to um, tune into what you were dealing with? So a couple of them I was one so I was there for like a week after I got to the new place. Um I think I was there so that my I felt like I was obtaining powers and they they didn't want me to have those powers. So I feel like they they were tricking they tricked me to feel like to to think that I was going to my family, Right. my star family, but like Ah, I wasn't. so what they were doing is they, you were getting to, you, the star family is there somewhere in the background. They're watching all this, right? But they didn't, they were not able to do anything yet. But this other group comes in, tries to block you from meeting your star family because they don't want you to connect with them. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cause That's what I I feel thought. like I'm very powerful. Hmm? I feel like I'm very powerful. This has happened where I've been able to connect with them like four different times already. You connected And with your every, star family four different times. and every single time, something has happened where they take me to the hospital and like it makes it so that i'm not i so they're i taking you to, 
They take you to the hospital to prevent you. They take you to this so-called hospital to divert you from connecting with your star family, correct? Yes. Ah, see, that's what I kind of figured. Um, do you uh -huh. feel that you're able to stop it? Um, uh, do you th think you can stop it from happening? Can you, you know how, you, do you want to know how to stop it? Would you like to stop it? I mean, stop them from doing what they're doing? How? Very simply. I think you, I would have, go on. I'm going to give you a suggestion. As I'm listening to your story, I work with the Ashtar Command, and I'm going to give you a suggestion that I believe will work. A matter of fact, I'm going to do one thing I've done every once in a while. I'm going to send the Ashtar Command spaceship. Where are you located? Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Give me a moment. I'm going to ask that one of the Ashtar ships go over Murfreesboro about 20,000 feet above your location tonight. I'm going to ask the ship to stay there. We're going to send Ashtar Command personnel down on the ground level. They're going to be not even noticed. If the other beings try to attempt to do anything, the Astro Command is going to intercede and they're going to be forced away from you. Uh, I'm going to do this. I do this every once in a while on my show, but I think I need to assist you. I really do. Now I'm operating in my Astro Command mode as opposed to talk show host mode. So I'm asking the Astro Command to protect this woman yeah. to go to her location. The other beings might be aware that there's something going to be happening but they have nothing over the Ashtar Command. The Ashtar Command are Christed beings of light. They represent many planetary systems of light in Christ consciousness, and they're going to protect you. There's going to be a 20, about 20 people coming off the ship tonight, and they're going to stay in that area until every one of those other beings is no longer there. So you're going to be protected. I want you to look at me for a minute. I'm putting my hand up here. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. I'm looking. Okay, close your eyes. I'm going to send an invisible ray of light into the center of your consciousness, into your brain area. I ask that the Ashtar Command protect this woman from any lower form ETs that are trying to stop her from being empowered in her Christ consciousness and her connection to her star family. We're calling on the command to make sure those beings that have been trying to take her can no longer take her anymore and stop her. They're going to be forced off the planet as of tonight, and they will not be able to intercede in her vibrational frequencies. I ask the command also go in every room in her house and clear all the energies to make sure that there's no opening for these beings to come in and interfere with her. And I do this now. You can open your eyes now. How do you feel? Okay. Did you feel something? I feel I feel like my head kind of hurts. Kind of hurts. But yeah, yeah like that's a because they on my head. Yeah, there was they they were trying to control you. Give me one more minute. We're going to make sure that there's no hurt. They are. Close your eyes just a minute. I ask that the Christ clear the energy around her body, let her mind relax, let whatever they were doing to control her be lifted from her consciousness and give it up to the creator. We give it up to the creator of all the multiverse now. Let her be at peace. Let the vibration of light penetrate her body. Let the frequencies of light penetrate the cellular structure of her body always, always in peace, in light. Take your time. Take your time. Relax. It's okay now. How do you feel? I feel good. Like good. I really hope it works because the next time that I'm connected to my star family, I really want to actually be able to connect with them because I was so close to connecting with them. And mm -hmm. before I even started learning about any of this, like, I just knew it like I just knew that mm -hmm. it was from a different place and that it was another family that I had like not yes. my family but like a different family yes you'll connect with them now you're going to be protected 
I'm making sure that ship is there permanently until I find out that you don't need the ship any there anymore. It's a large ship. It's like I said, it's about 20,000 feet cloaked above your location right now. Okay. So you're going you're gonna to be protected. We're putting okay. a tensor beam around your location. There's going to be a tensor beam invisible around your location. Nothing will be able to pretend, penetrate that tensor beam. No, no lower vibrational ETs can do anything. You're going to be well protected. I can guarantee it. Okay. Absolutely protected. This is what I do on my show. This is not your normal UFO spiritual talk show. Yes, it is a talk show, but I also work the Ashtar Command. I'm a Christ of being of light. I don't come from this planet, and I have the ability to do certain things. People don't realize it, but I do have abilities. And uh, Yeah, I was definitely attracted to the show. Whenever I saw it the first time, I was like, this is what I need to be looking at, like, because yes. it's real, you know? Do, yes. Oh, do you know? Do you know who Stuart Wilde is? I've heard of Stuart Wilde. I have not focused on the name. Uh, I'm so involved in so many things and with the show and everything. I haven't had a chance to focus on individuals. Can you want to explain who Stuart Wilde is? So he basically he teaches you how to get into deeper states, like to contact your star family, basically. Um, oh, good. He has a website. It's called StuartWild.com. Oh. And it just, he, he goes into deep meditation states where he can see like the, the, the space where it's not like space, but he can see like the other dimensions, I guess. Oh. But, but kind of back to my story. Um, yes. Another there. Reptilian. I knew that he was like, like oh, a, I think you have bad a dinosaur connection. person or something. Because your connection was kind of weird. Do you have bad better? Wi-Fi where you are? Is, yeah, now it's better. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, he he was like a dinosaur person. He was very, he was very uh old and like he he looked like a dinosaur and then i kept it's just the reptilians like i've i've encountered so many of them now well, and well, that, the vampire that, like well put it this way the reptilians we're going to kick their cosmic butt so that the Aztec command we're going to get those reptilians i did it for somebody in vermont we took the reptilians and forced them off the planet that was a few months ago last year and uh, yeah that's what yeah. it is they they're, they're not good so we're going to make sure that they are escorted off the planet they're they're probably trying to have a like some sort of a base where you are but they're going to be escorted and forced off the planet uh, we're not going to stand for that no reptilians and uh, we're going to make sure they leave you're not going to have any reptilians anymore i guarantee you i'm glad you shared yeah. that part of it they're going to be forced off the planet I, uh, I'm so Bloom, they're, no. they're they're horrible. They they yeah. will stop doing anything. Well, that's their goal is to stop people from connecting with their star family. In your particular yeah, case, just, as yeah, we'll stop them. Yeah, You're breaking up a little bit. But if go we ahead. believe in vampires. Um, we don't believe in vampires because uh, the show is not about he, that. He asked but if what, we believe in vampires. Yes. Yeah, so basically what she's saying is the way these reptilians are acting, it's like being like they're sucking the life energy out of the person because that's what she's really that's what she's trying to say. So, no, we don't believe in that. You know, we don't focus on any of that. It's all yeah. based on ETs. But what she's going through with the reptilians is like without sucking anything out, they're like trying to stop her from connecting with her star family and they're not going to do it anymore. We're going to stop that like right now, you know. And we're going to stop it. You know, not me personally. Well, the thank Astro you Commanders. for. Well, thank you for sharing your story. Um, you don't mind that this show is being recorded. We're going to have it on my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel where I post all my shows that I do on TikTok for people that don't have TikTok. So people can learn about everybody's story. So that's okay with you? It's recorded is it, anyway. Um, in your description? It's on my is description. it on your it's description for your um, my show? 
Okay. I don't, I, oh, I don't have a lot. It. Yeah, it'll yeah. be on Astrox Man Spaceship News on YouTube. The show okay. will be posted is that, is that tomorrow morning. So, but is that yeah. information on your account for your YouTube? My bio? Um, I don't think it's on there. I don't have enough room to put it on there. But it will. I will post it here. Or one of my, uh, I would, yeah, my Chesno is one of the moderators. She just posted it on the screen here, Astro Command Spaceship News. That's my YouTube channel. So somebody posted it. Yeah, that's my, that's one somebody of my moderators. posted it in the chat. That's one of my moderators. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for being here. Any final words that you have for our well, audience? Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. You know, uh, when there are uh, things like this happen, I go ahead. Be strong. Don't let the. Oh, I just said be strong. Don't let them try to control you. Just stand your ground and don't let them confuse you, you know? Yeah, no. I want you to keep in touch with us on the show here. I want, And I want you to let us know, Strawberry, how things go in the coming weeks. Uh, if you have seen a change, but we're going to have a spaceship and about 20 personnel on the ground level with you. You won't see who they are, but you'll feel an energy shift and they, they might be walking around in your home. If you feel that energy, you'll feel a light energy. You'll feel loving energy versus what you went through. And we're going to clean house. We're going to make sure the reptilians are completely thrown out of there. I'm putting in my own earth words, but we're going to okay. kick cosmic butt, so to speak. I thank you. I really I do. Everyone, I want to thank you for coming here and sharing that story. It's important. And uh, I think a lot of people hearing that story, uh, it meant a lot to a lot of people. We're just, we all love you. We want to make sure you're safe and you will be. Really. Okay. All right. Yep. We're going to say uh, Strawberry Ness was our guest. And uh, let's do this here. I want to thank you for coming on as our first guest. You're watching Encounters. This is the kind of show I do. You see, this is where I am in com command of everything I do. This is what I teach people. And I've been working with the Ashtar Command for years. I came from that level of light. I came from that level of understanding. I'm fully awakened. You can't fool the commander. You know, don't even try to. It won't work. And when people are empowered in Christ consciousness, can't be touched. No one can be touched. No one can be touched. Uh, are we like the rebels against... Well, kind of. That's a good way of putting it. I love the way you said that. Real Mario, Algeria. Great. I love the way you said that. So it was sort of like... Um, a good analogy is we are the light force. The reptilians are the negative forces of ETs. And they've been around this planet for too long. So all the negative ETs are being forced out of the planet right now. Uh, believe me, I can tell you, Ashtar Command ships are all over the world, cloaked, and they are looking for any vestiges of hiding places where these people are, these beings are, and we're going to get them all off the planet. And they're going to be forced off the planet. We're not going to allow any of that garbage on Earth. None of it. You know? So, uh, so you know about the Star Wars movies. So it's a good analogy, Mario. Good amount analogy. But we are basically Christed beings of light, the light force that is here. Many people here on Earth are human. I mean, there are many people here on Earth. Of course, they're human, but they're not human. So for me, I come from Mars. That's my origin. I'm a Christed being of light. My star family is not from Earth. You know, uh, so when there's a lot of people in this audience who know that they come and are connected from somewhere else. There are some people that are just learning about that. You know, you knew it. There you go. Are you in Algeria? Real Mario, are you in the U.S. or Algeria? It says Algeria. So if you're in Algeria, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, let's see. I'm just reading uh, people's comments. My last name. Oh, your last name is Algeria. Oh, well, that's interesting. Mario Algeria. That's an interesting name. Not too many people with that kind of a last name. So we're doing interviews tonight. You have to be over 18. Uh, good evening, uh, James. 
Good evening, everybody. World needs more love. Good evening. So the interviews are like this. You have to be over 18, no foul language, no smoking, no vaping, no people being drunk, uh, no paranormal discussions. We don't do that here. There's 10,000 other places for it. Uh, and just um, the main thing is to stay focused. You can talk about crop circles, mermaids, merpeople, fairies, a Bigfoot, you know, like I say, crop circles, visitations that she had. Whatever the experience has been, Rachel Devine, thank you. Whatever the experience has been. And I got my goals up here. I have eight, seven more hats that are available with a mustache. So I'm looking for seven more mustache hats during tonight's show. Thank you, Transcending, for the roses. We appreciate that, all the gifts. So if you do have the ability to give me a hat with the mustache, please do. Yeah, yeah, Spirit, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. We appreciate the hat with the mustache. Oh, thank you. So we are here on Encounters. We're going to talk to people, and it's very spontaneous. So uh, you must, again, have over 200 followers to be on audio, Jersey 4. Thank you, Sprites. Uh, and if you also, well, thank you. Thank you, Claudia Viaforce. Thank you for the bracelet. Uh, thank you again for the hat. Uh, and so I was going to say, I actually forgot what I was going to say. I got distracted here for a minute. But uh, if you want to be a guest and you want to share something about visitations, have you had encounters with space people, we'd love to hear your stories. Uh, yeah, yes, spirits, thank you. Uh, you must have, and if you have a 1,000, Claudia, thank you. Sukar, thank you for the tiny dini. If you have over a 1,000 followers, you could go on audio like uh, the other person did. And um, so I'd love to hear your stories. And in between, I'll share things. Edic, thank you for the roses as well. I appreciate it, Claudia. Thank you for the heart me. You're all awesome people. And we want to get up to 100,000 before 1 o'clock tonight. We're at 38.1. So I need everybody collectively to participate in the show. Yeah, yeah, Spirit, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, Spirit, thank you for the hats. Oh, man, Susan Murray, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, we are at, let's see here. Jackie, thank you for the amazing... Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. Thank you. Uh, I am healer. Uh, thank you for the roses. Wow. Thank you. Uh, I am. I appreciate the roses a lot. Uh, I am. Thank you for another rose. Rod, thank you for the hat. I appreciate you folks are awesome. You know, you really are. Are you CTD or CDT? Captain Salty. Uh question why would a ship hover over my car and then just leave i have seen a uh, charlene let's see here charlene uh, charlene we have to follow you i'm going to try to answer your question i know you don't have a thousand or 200 followers so give me a second here i think i'm going to sneeze i'll be right on the camera <laughs> excuse me we got New England allergies here, so excuse me for the sneezing on live. Allergy season in New England, thank you. So in terms of your question, I'm going to go backwards. The question was why, is the question still there? Pin the question up again, I, I kind of missed it a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what the question was. Uh, Okay, Charlene says, question, why would a ship hover over my car and then just leave? I haven't seen, let's see, I haven't seen seen something. I haven't seen a ship since. Charlene, what did you feel? Why would a ship hover over my car? What was the year that it hovered? What happened and how did you feel? Can you tell us how you felt? I'd like to know. Well, that was interesting. Bloom, I'm going to answer Charlene's question. I'm trying to find out the answer. When I was a teen, I saw a bright sunlight at night hovering over me. I was frozen. I felt like, well, like they were checking us out for some reason. Okay. Charlene, so you never had anything happen since then. 
it sounds like uh, you might, again, without verbally talking to you, I can only guess that maybe you had a connection to those uh, extraterrestrials on board that ship that were following you or hovering above you. But eventually when you get up there with 200, 200 you know, followers, I'll be able to get more directly with you. Charlene uh, Mobley says, no, I'm trying to see. It's hard when you're dealing with questions and comments. Let me see here. Uh, I am trying to, when I read questions, I try to answer them the best I can. It's tough a little bit, depending on the question, to decipher. Uh, I think you mixed up comments. I think I did. But I will try to, one person said, maybe they returned you. Let's see here. It could be the Thomas is saying, maybe you were, again, hypothetically, you could have been taken and then brought back and they were watching you. It's really hard to say. I know there's two different comments for two different people relating to two different things. And I will try to, I'm drawing, trying to stay focused here for a minute and see what that is. I can tell you, though. Let's see. Yep, I'm going solo tonight. I was wondering if you were Central Time Zone. Yeah, we're uh, Captain Salty. We're Eastern. He still remembers it. Oh, interesting. I'm going to Australian. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Charlene Ashley says, Mobley, it's easier to get followers if your account isn't private. So Charlene, turn your account to public and then people can follow you and we can get you up to 200 followers and then you can come on live on my show and we can uh, kind of talk to you a little bit. We'd love to do that. Is Commander Thor working with you? Commander Thor, you mean Valiant Thor? Sucre, you're talking about Valiant Thor? Um... I don't work with Valiant Thor, but again, I studied his coming to Earth many years ago with the contact ebooks from Dr. Frank Strange's. Yes, Valiant Thor. Hey, Ghost the Machine. Good to see you, brother. Ghost the Machine was a guest last night. TikTok took him down for disclosing stuff, and then he got back on. That was pretty amazing. Uh, TikTok actually took the ghost down because he was disclosing stuff that was top secret. And uh, he got taken down, but he's back. So it's good to see him. Dustin, welcome to the show. He had a live today. Good, Honey McReynolds. It's good that he was able to go live. He has a lot of good stories. Yeah, yeah, Spirit. Thank you. Uh, they flexed me on me and allowed me a warning. So they gave you a warning. You know, they gave you a warning. Well, obviously, you were making an impact on my show because they decided to take you down. And uh, I've reached my goal. I did, I'm going to set up a new goal here for people that are wondering what, uh, what, what's next here. Let me just do this while we're talking to people. We're going to set a new goal. I'm going to do the cowboy hat. I like the number eight. So we're doing eight of these really flashy looking cowboy hats here. So who the people that like to do cowboy hats, you now have the ability to do eight of them. I just switched it over to eight cowboy hats. Okay. The commander looks at all these different options. I know people are like certain types of things to gift me. So I, those who like the bright cowboy hat, you now can do it during the show till 1 o'clock. Laura J., thank you for the gift. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, uh, we had Ghost on last night. I thought I was going to be taken down because of what was going on, but uh, he's really got some good information. He really does. Jack Yep, thank you. We appreciate all the gifts here. And I can tell you things are amping up. As a matter of fact, Ghost, you talked about 2027. Up, you talked about earlier, I was, I was watching you on another live earlier today. You did talk about contact 
in 2027. So you're another person that knows what I already know. I talked about a contact in 2022 happening starting through up to 2027. So I've had at least four or five people unrelated to me that all know that we are heading towards galactic contact as a planet by 2027. And also not only that, the Pentagon understands and knows that, and so does the Ministry of Defense in England, and all the major Air Force personnel that are generals in different countries understand this, including Russia, that we are coming close to contact. And that's going to happen whether people like it or not, which I love saying whether you like it or not, on this planet, we are going to have direct contact with people from other planets, star people. They know the good people, the ones that have been giving us a chance to get our act together. This is the deal. This is the real deal. We're going to be having this contact happen for everybody. That's going to be boost, you know, kind of like going up the ladder, so to speak, by 2027. So your information on that was actually correct. You already knew about 2027. I've taught people in here about 2027. 2027 was the original timeline. Between now and 2027, including before the end of this year, I believe there'll be a lot more sightings of spaceships. I don't call them UFOs. I call them spaceships coming from other worlds, that we're going to have those visual encounters and people need to have their cameras ready to videotape what they see and document everything that's going on because it's going to increase. Yeah, our planet's kind of messed up right now. It is kind of falling apart. The good news is we're going to go into a transformational change where our planet is going to be cleaned up. But it's going to be a collective effort. When we do have official contact, we are going to have to help clean up our planet with our space brothers and sisters. We're going to be going into a transitional stage where that will occur. I can put Ghost back up as long as he doesn't get taken down or I don't get taken down putting him back up because I thought I was going to be taken out on my show for that. And um, I don't want to end up losing the show and I don't want to end up losing him either. So I'm playing a little bit conservative here. Um, we'll bring him up and see what happens for a minute or two. Let's see what we can do. Um, but he has a lot of information. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the general aspect of contact with Ghost. And we'll bring Ghost up to talk about contact. We'll stay focused on that. We'll bring him up for a few minutes. I know that you were very popular last night. So we're going to see what happens here. Let me, I got to bring you back up because uh, my TikTok is acting weird. Give me a second. I'm going to bring it down and bring it back up again. Okay. Uh, we'll do this here. Let's see here. Okay, now we'll bring it back up again for a few minutes. Uh, let's see, where can I find them? Let's see, Ghost, you're here somewhere. Here you are. All right, now this time it should work. Let's see if the TikTok works the way. Okay. All right. So this is just like people know this is Encounters, the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. I'm host of WESU FM NPR Pacific Radio's Cosmic Eye Radio. Ghost, welcome back to the show tonight. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Doing good. Yeah, well, it was a pretty well, wild show last night, but it's good to have yeah. you back with us. So tell us about contact. I was listening to you talking on another live. Uh, let's focus on that contact, and you're talking about the galactic area of you know the space people coming back. Let's focus. So we didn't talk really a lot about that last night, so let's delve into what you understand about that. How did you understand that to happen, and was that related to your contact? So um, a little bit of both, actually. Um, I, th I was able to come across this information because I do – cybersecurity and ethical hacking for a living. Um, I work for uh, a pretty powerful cybersecurity firm. I won't say which one. No, let's leave um, that out of the picture. But I work for a pretty powerful cybersecurity firm. And um, long story short, man, there's not a whole lot in the circle that I don't really know what's going on because it's kind of my job to know what's going on. Yeah. 
Um, and how did you uh, learn though? Uh, how did you learn about the aspects of contact? I mean, in terms of, I know from four or five good sources of my own, unrelated to Pete, they don't channel anything. It's real information. I knew this in 2022 that there was going to be contact in 2027. The timeline has shifted that things are starting to happen in middle to late 2024. So can you ex explain how you learned about this from where you are? So I learned about it because my family's um, military intelligence and then... Oh, they are. Uh, yeah, they're military intelligence. Um, also, uh, I have... There's no database that I can't get into if I don't feel... Uh, I'm pretty creative. I can get into pretty much any database I want to get into. There's no computer that's safe on Web 2.0. Right. And we're going to keep you safe from either one of us having a problem tonight. So, um, yeah. so that's good to know. So as you are learning this stuff, what do you know about the Pentagon's knowledge? And I know the Pentagon. We have a uh, contact in the DOD last year. And we know that the Pentagon, they are already know that there's going to be contact coming to Earth. And uh, I'm sure they're freaking out. There's a big fight going within the Pentagon between the younger generation and the generals that have kept the secret for 70 years. So what do you know with your military family and intelligence regarding what's going to be coming in the next few years and within this year? So first things first, Web 2.0 is going to fall. That's going to be one of the big things that happens this year. It's going to be replaced with quantum Internet, which is Web 3.0. Um... Huh. So that's going to be the first really big thing that happens. And then we'll be switching to the quantum financial system uh, eventually here. That's coming as well. Um, and f there's talk in, in – there's chatter in the community about finally the, uh, the, the New World Order establishment coming finally into fruition – a one world well, government, gonna, one well, world government. Well, they're going to try. They're going to try that. That false one world government is not going to happen. But I do understand that has been something that the the negative ones want to create, which is a false situation of control of the planet. Uh, and we talked about this a little bit last night, you and I. And I explained that uh, I work with the Ashtar Command, which is the Star People, and they're not going to let that happen. But go ahead. It's good to let let, let people know that scenario, but it's going to be stopped before it even happens. Well, we've got till April eighth. I mean, they're gonna start. They're gonna start doing the FEMA thing April eighth. April eighth. April eighth and April 9th. So I'm I'm getting paperwork that I've seen official paperwork from the sheriff and from FEMA both, um, huh. stating that the undesirables are going to be starting to be rounded up April 9th. Really. And this is what we call, is this internal information, intelligence information that you're sharing? Yeah, it's, they've been preparing for the eclipse for two years. That's why they had 80,000 National Guard troops get dispersed. Really? And these troops that are getting dispersed, where are they being dispersed to? All across the United States. They're not just being centrally uh, centered around the the eclipse belt, they're actually being deployed to pretty much every state. There's eighty thousand. Someone's asking uh, in our in our group here of viewers, who are the undesirables? Can you explain? Um, so the undesirables to the government are like the preppers, the trumpers, um, the anarchists, the domestic terrorists, um, homeless like people that they consider something that would be a threat to their utopian society. Uh -huh. Okay. So these people that are in power, the same people that covered up the whole UFO thing for 70 years. Now we're going into this other phase and trying to create something else that really is ba basically a false narrative. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're, they're trying to basically, reestablish a one world government currency and religion right so that they can get it so that we can become more like the grays in a sense right. okay and i know that's a hypothetical you're, you're entering it in a way not that it's going to happen but this is what they'd like to do if they can get away with it um right. unfortunately they don't unfortunately they don't know that there are people from other planets that are way more powerful that are star people 
that have watched what they've been doing for over 70 plus years on this planet, off planet. And they're going to be in for a rude awakening. Do they have any idea that the star people are monitoring them or do they don't even care? So I know for a fact that they have quantum technology. Um, it's called it's it's quantum scalar technology, but the Greys definitely possess it. I have a video on my other page, um, my other account, and you can see the Greys in the light. They actually can look at you and read your consciousness through the light. And right. at the same time, they can hear your thoughts through hydrogen, through hydrogen manipulation. Huh. We have one person, Scott, uh, saying the military, he, he looks like he's probably military in his, proto, his photo, has been deployed due to the anticipated crowd size traveling to watch the ellipse. And I can see, uh, is it normal for the military to be sent out and deployed uh, to, because uh, a lot of people are going to be watching the ellipse that are interested in this from a from a astronomical standpoint, from you know looking at the stars and people that are stargazers. That's another part of the society that wants to go out and see the ellipse on a normal scale. He says the military has been deployed due to the anticipated crowd size traveling to watch the ellipse. What do you think about that? It looks like he's a former military person in his photo. Is there some of that going on too? Um, I, I, all I know is that there's 80,000 National Guard troops that have been deployed. They're not just deployed to help with crowd sizes, or they wouldn't be mm -hmm. asking about um, people to store food for at least 30 days and to have a 30-day yeah. supply of water and make sure you have gas in your car. And all of these different things are telling people to prep for uh, yeah. in case there's no cell phone reception or the power grid goes down or central bank data processing right. freezes right. up. What happens uh, for... What happens if nothing happens other than the ellipse? Let's say from a, a hypothetical standpoint, as host of this talk show here, I ask questions like that uh, because I do. So let's say nothing happens except the ellipse happens. People wear their glasses or boxes to look at it. And then we go the 7th and 8th of April. By the 9th of April, everything is still the way it is. Now, I'm not saying that's true or not true, but... Again, until we get there, we don't know exactly what's potentially going to happen. And it could be that we're being lied to. Well, we're always lied to by a lot of the world governments around the world. But um, so is it possible? I mean, you have some inside information about this with the military. Is it possible? Let's say nothing happens except for the ellipse. What do people do after that if nothing happens? Let's say, honestly, nothing goes on whatsoever. I'm not saying it is or isn't because I just don't know. I'm going... I'm, I'm just doing the interview here, um, so I'm not taking any sides with it except to say that it's interesting what you're providing, and if it doesn't play out that way, what do you do if nothing happens? Here's what's another little interesting thing that I learned last night, um, that the BRIC nations come August 1st will no longer be accepting U.S. dollars or doing transactions in U.S. dollars, period. Now, how, now I'm going to ask you from a news background, because my background is news media. Where do you get that information from? That came from some, one of my contacts in Saudi Arabia. Hmm. They're about to announce it in the next three to five days on like okay. national world news. Are you serious? So on CNN, NBC, Fox, they're going to announce this. Yeah, it'll be on the world and world news announcement in the next two to three days. Okay, so let's take it. And again, I'm just, you know, we're friends. I'm just asking you these questions because that's what I do. So let's take the scenario of that happening. So in three to four days, keep, you know, let's watch the news and see what the world news media. I get all the news channels, BBC. Uh, I get uh, the U.S. news and so forth. Let's see if they actually play this out and actually tell the broadcast media to actually broadcast this, you know? I mean, they're going to have to. They don't have a choice because the world medias are going to be broadcasting it from the other countries. So it's going to be, this is being orchestrated by the United Nations that every news outlet in the world, England, Scandinavia, Africa, wherever it is, Japan, they're simultaneously all going to broadcast the same information. Yeah, it's it's going to be well known. It's the 
the 56 BRIC nations are no longer going to be using U.S. dollars for trade. Okay. That's huge. Yeah. Well, we'll have to just see, you know, for me, I'm like a wait and see thing until we get there. And maybe it's going to happen. Uh, again, I'm, I have a very uh, news-oriented mind. So I have to ask questions. That's my background. I studied with Pacifica Radio in the 70s, and they taught me uh, about news, and this is why I ask it. So I'm not doubting or dis, you know, or believing it or not believing it. I just want to, you know, see what happens here from a you know day-to-day -day aspect. Uh, what else is going on that you can tell us uh, that is related to? Uh, you mentioned the other this morning. Uh, you know, we talked about 2027. Now, you might have a different aspect to it, to the knowledge of that, but my understanding from my contact off planet is that we have a bunch of different galactic groups of light that are very, very strong that are coming here to liberate the planet. And they're not in any simulation. These are, you know, from my perspective, I come from Mars, no simulations whatsoever. The simulation you talked about is potentially possible on another parallel Earth. On this particular Earth, I don't see, I've never seen that ever. So there could be another timeline where that exists. I've never seen it on this particular timeline in this universe, just to let you know, because I don't come from here. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I'm really honestly like, I think they're already pretty much here, man, and they're they've been in full swing since October. We just they have fourth dimensional cloaking technology. They can make their ships appear look, look like a cloud if they want to. Oh yeah, of course they can. Yeah, absolutely, that's true. As a matter of fact, when they do look like a cloud, and you see a ship that looks like a cloud. The, the the ship is being is affecting the electromagnetic field that it's around in our atmosphere. That's why it has that cloud look, but it looks like a spaceship because the the electromagnetic field is actually being affecting the spaceship. So they're cloaked. You know, they're right about that. That is true. Yeah, and I know there's definitely, from what I've been led to believe, there are thousands of them already surrounding the planet. Yeah, you would be right about that. There's a lot of uh, positive space people. The ships are cloaked outside the atmosphere. Some of them are about 50,000 miles outside our atmosphere, all over in the realm of the universe. They're in our galaxy all over, and they're just waiting for the time to make contact. Uh, I can tell you that I and three other people work with the Ashtar Command are going to be taken on a ship. One of our, our people has been in nine times taken on an Astro Command ship, which I work with, and she's met our biological star family, uh, which are the good people, and um, and we'll be going off planet soon ourselves. So what you're saying about that is absolutely true. They've been here. You're absolutely correct about that. Yeah, they walk among us. You would never know one if you see yeah, them. Yeah, no, they do. They do. You know, you can go down the street, right, and you can have somebody – that's walking very beautiful, and you look at their face. Some of the contactees in the 60s would talk about the star people. They'd see them. They look like an olive complexion, very beautiful energy, and you'd walk right by them, and you know there was something slightly different about them. And there are many star people that have come off the ships here since the 50s that live right amongst us. They work in science. They work in education. They work in all levels of our society. And they're secretly trying to do good things, but they work amongst us. They could be even working in the military for all, all you know. But they're working very quietly amongst those levels, trying to shift what's happening here. So that there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. Very much so. Also, we're on the timeline of the uh, of the hybridization of the species as well. I've, I've got videos on my other account of... The hybridization of the species where we're now mixing human dna with gray dna and uh we're creating hybrids well that's been happening for even before you were you sound like a young person too i think that's been happening since ever since roswell or even slightly before that but that's a, a segment of what we call the program that was done by eisenhower when he agreed to let the zetas abduct human beings and which is what you're talking about the hybridization program that's when it started the people that were opposed to it were well, the star people which is rightly so that they opposed this project which was not not should have never been done because there are people let me put it this way who come directly from other planets 
of much higher spiritual frequency that opposed what was being done because it should have never been done. There was no reason for it to be done except that the Zeta were losing See. their humanity, which they did many, many moons ago. I mean, you're talking about millions of years ago. They were once like us. They came here uh, to have this program agreement in order to get some emotional reconnection to the human spirit, and they kind of messed it up. Basically, well, they did. They messed it up big time, actually. Well, they actually created um, a new set of hybrid. They, they were hybrids. I've seen the pictures of them. Like They're called Yael children, the Yael children. Yael children, okay. Yeah, the Yael children are uh, apparently whenever we shift densities, um, we're going to become Yael children in the next density. Well, those that are interconnected like that who are that those you know to those that might be connected in that program you could be right for the rest of the people that are not yaya children that come from the stars directly that's not happening those that come from the christ consciousness levels that's not happening but i do believe there's probably from the abduction programs that were done since eisenhower uh, agreed to it i think those integrations of the hybrid children do exist. I mean, obviously, there's many books written about it. Uh, people that have been abducted who were hypnotized by uh, people I knew in the UFO community that were hypnotists, hypnotizing people that had been like Bud Hopkins. If you read his books, a lot of people talk about being abducted and that they were able to see their children. They kind of showed them them for a minute. These were the Zeta, and then they would have to be sent back to Earth. And that was a hybridization program that was that's been going on for years. That's something I've already known about for many, many years. That's a segment of the population on Earth, but that doesn't represent the the whole population because there's a lot of people here that came here in human form like me from Mars with the Ashtar Command and the Christ consciousness that are direct. We don't know hybridization whatsoever. Uh, but that is a segment that is, will you say, in a certain program that most people don't know about. Yeah, I know that um, that those those particular hybrids. It got me thinking. So when they did the whole Serpo exchange program, and uh, they did that exchange, one of the officers had passed. He perished on the way there, and they actually took his body parts and they had used his body parts and integrated them into their. Uh, you know, their bioengineering program. And huh. uh, they actually recycled his entire body while he was on Serpo. He never even ended up coming back. And can you explain, uh, you did it last night for people that are new here, what is Serpo? This is Encounters, the Spiritual UFO Talk Show. I'm your host, Commander Alion. I've also hosted WESU's NPR radio, the uh, Cosmic Eye, every Sunday morning, 1130. So can you mention what Serpo is, for people that don't know what that is. Yeah, so Serpo was the home world of the Zetas from the Zeta Reticuli 2 star cluster. Mm -hmm. It's spelled uh, S-E-R-P-O. And it was um, a desert planet, uh, didn't have a whole lot of water, in a binary star system. So the sun never set. So it was really hot all the time. Huh. And so what happened? Because it was hot all the time. The, um, what they, happened? They were driven underground. Um, they, they're primarily an underground civilization. Um, that explains some of their features. Uh, they, they're vegetarian. They grow all their vegetables in hydroponics. They have uh, solar fusion suns that are under the ground. Um, and they have extensive, uh, obviously, scientific backgrounds. Uh, with, you know, all kinds of various technologies, including soul transference technology. So they have the ability. And why did they create soul transference technology? When, why did they do that? Can you explain why? You never have to die and you'd be able to keep your consciousness and just upload it into a new meat shell. Right. So they had to do that. So why did they have to do that? Because they were losing their soul abilities? So no, they did that so that they could their their soul would never die. They would stay in the permanent three D form, and their their consciousness would would gain collective and get older. But the body would basically be recycled. Uh, every, so it'd be so it'd be every, recycled in a 
so this is interesting you say well souls never die anyway so they they their souls they were recycling them into a 3d form correct yeah they're putting them into new bodies right so if they keep going into a 3d form they can never ascend into a higher frequency because they're stuck so what they did is if they created this situation they put themselves in a situation where they keep recycling themselves back into a 3d world therefore never being able to reach Christ consciousness because they're going to be stuck. So essentially right. they're stuck. They're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, repeating, repeating, repeating the same things they've repeated again. So they never go where Christed beings of light go, which is those, a lot of my audience are Christed beings of light. They go and when they leave this realm, they go and they graduate and go into another vibrational pattern that's beyond the 3D, which is what they're going to. These particular beings are now going in, a, in a, a circular period where they're just getting, they're just stuck. They can't go anywhere. Yeah. And their population and that's like, is and, and, dying off. Yeah. That's because they messed up. So they're now they're messing up again, thinking this is their salvation. When in fact, this is going to destroy their whole ability to exist. And that's the reason why they came to earth is to try to regain the emotions and the spirit, but they're doing it the wrong way. They should just, they, they messed themselves up before they became what they were. And now they're messing themselves up again, thinking this is the way to do it. And yet all they're doing is recycling themselves back into a limited consciousness, which they're going to be stuck in that limited consciousness forever because they chose to do what they're doing, like you were talking about. That's just, just totally, you know, it's just amazing. It's just, it's wrong. It's amazing they're doing it. They're advanced enough to do something like that, but they weren't advanced enough when they were human to realize the mistakes they were making before they made the mistakes. Therefore, they got rid of their humanity. They became looking the way they looked. They want to recycle themselves and get stuck, and that's what they're doing. So they're not really doing themselves any favors for their society. Even if they are vegetarian, they're essentially destroying themselves eventually. That's why I look at it. Yeah, Would you I agree? Would they're they're basically destroying their ability to uh transcend the 3d body but so they they gained the technology so that they were able to move a lot of their people to the higher density though you know they do have the technology the skin suits that allow them to move into higher density right but if majority of them still do the recycling in the 3d thing then they're going to get stuck. The ones that are moving into high density, they would have to be the ones that re didn't do that thing, the recycling thing. They must have found a way to go to say, we don't want to get stuck here. We want to graduate and go to a higher frequency of vibration is what I hear you saying. So it looks mm -hmm. like part of the population decided, nope, we're going to do it this way. We're going to keep recycling ourselves and keep going round and round and round and get stuck. You had a few, it sounds like you're saying there were a few of them that were smart enough to say, no, I'm not going to die. If I let my soul go, I can go up into a higher level of vibrational consciousness. Is that correct? Well, I think I mean, that's what I'm hearing. I think consciousness grows on a society as a collective over the course of time. Um, you know, I think that I, and on top of that, um, the helixes get coded differently. As you know, there's different levels of helix coding to your blood. Um, we're actually moving from a two-strand helix to a 12-strand helix over the course of this evolution. Thank you, Leigh. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just uh, thank somebody for the gift. So I think, uh, I think there's a perception of reality where we're going into – the way I describe on my show for people in my classes when I do workshops is that we are in, let's say, you go first grade, you get to 12th grade, you go into college, you go into, uh, you know, you go to high school, college, you say, I want to further my college experience. So you never can, you don't have to stop. You can continually go and educate yourself forever and continue going to higher levels of consciousness. So, but there are beings that get stuck where they do go in this circle pattern that like, you're talking about, and they are more comfortable in the circle pattern because it feels safer to them. They're afraid to step out of that closet so to speak if they step out of the closet they're going to freak out because they don't know what's going to happen but if they do step out into the great unknown they might find that they're going to learn a lot more expand their consciousness and not be stuck whereas i see 
definitely some of these beings are stuck. They're, they've decided to be stuck, although there are, it sounds like there are a few, based on reading your energy of what you're telling me, there are some that chose not to be stuck and that are actually trying to better themselves and go to reach where humanity is going, which is into a Christ consciousness state. Because that's the next level. The next level is Christ consciousness. If you're not going into Christ consciousness, then you're going nowhere. You're stuck. If you're going into cosmic Christ consciousness, as our star families are, then you're going to be surrounded by galactic beings of light. Uh, people, most of the star people are vegetarians on their planets. They don't eat meat or anything. They grow their own food. They look like us. They're beautiful looking people. Uh, unlike these other ones that have been going this you know, vibrational circle pattern, that are stuck, I, I do think you're saying that there are some, and it feels like there's some that aren't stuck, that don't want to be in that pattern. And they clearly want to go into a, a higher state. Yeah, I think that's why they're ultimately creating the hybrids, um, in particular the Yael children, so that they can uh, try to regrow their, their normal state of being, the humanoid state of being that they so uh, want to possess. And also, Ghost, let's uh, bring you up Red. Red, welcome to the show. We have Ghost here with us on Encounters. Good evening. Hello. Good Red. evening. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's um, great, great I, to have you. And where, whereabouts are you? And you're, and you're welcome to be with us. And are you over 18? Um, I am from Virginia. And what was the last question? Oh, are you over? I was going to say, are you over 18? Oh. Yes. Yes, sir, I oh, am. Okay. Okay. So what would you, you've been watching the show, listening so what would you like to share with us, uh, with Ghost and myself here? So I have a thought. I don't know if anybody is a scientist on here or is, have any type of actual um, formal education in science. But here's my theory. I don't know if anybody's paid attention to the reference of aliens. Um, does anybody, I'm asking this a part of also my um, input. Does anybody have any sources of aliens having animal-like features whether it be a beak or a trunk um huh. and there isn't the, 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 I, there isn't because they're more humanoid they're more human-like with two eyes um right. two arms and you know full-length bodies and able to walk on two legs right. so in my theory if anybody's studied any type of um I guess we'll say in in motion of the theory of relativity and even more so the string theory. Right. Um, it, it would be, in my opinion, that aliens are not nothing more than humans that have evolved in the future. Right. That's so all. I can I'll answer your question. So it's a good, and now I'll have Ghost jump in. So there are different types of space beings, and it's all based on a vibrational pattern. So for me. I came out of the closet years ago when I had my experience when I met my star family as a kid. There were men, women, and children in a flying saucer in a cul-de-sac when I lived in Long Island as a kid. And I went upstairs. Nobody went upstairs. They're all in the kitchen. And I looked out my brother's window, and the ship was hovering in the cul-de-sac. I saw beautiful, tall people, men, women, and children in light blue spaceship. I mean, light blue outfits that were spacesuits. So my knowledge comes from the star knowledge of positive ETs, positive space people. I call it star beings, star people. Now, there are other types of beings that exist 5% or less that don't look very human-like that might have what you, what you call uh, a head that has like a, a feature uh, of a big head or maybe a beak or something. That is like under 5% of the intergalactic population. The 95% of the population is basically humanoid, but in different levels of humanoid. There's spiritual human beings from other planets that are very highly spiritual, work with the Ashtar Command, which I talk about all the time here, uh, you know, and are very much here to help our planet, help us, uh, they've helped other planets, help us ascend to a greater spiritual understanding of our connection to our star family. So that's where I come from. But I'm also, because I do a UFO show, I listen to all the different perspectives, which is why this show is so popular. But I love your question. That are I, I do understand there are 5% or less of what's out there, wherever it's from in the universe, parallel reality, 
different dimension or whatever it might be that won't exactly look like us. You know, just like animals don't all look like all birds don't look the same. All, uh, all bears don't look the same. All monkeys don't look the same. I think you can say in the universe or the multiverse, there are many different rainbows to the galactic levels. So that's that would be my answer. Does that make sense to you? Uh, Red? Yes, um, that makes sense. Uh, I, I guess that's kind of, I didn't know that there was such beings. Um, somebody like put are, in the yeah. comments. Yeah, somebody put in the comments about fish-like people, um, and then that just goes if, you know, I, I want to even throw in Atlantis. Do you believe any correlation or actual? Oh, man, talk about Atlantis, and I'll get ghosting on this in a minute. I was hypnotized <laughs> many years ago, and I was, the hypnotist is very good, and I had a recording on tape, I have to find it, where I went back to Atlantis, because we all have connections we don't remember. We all have connections to things like Atlantis or Lemuria. And Atlantis is real. Atlantis, in our particular frequency, they can't find it. But Atlantis, in another slightly different frequency, exists and is actually a, a place where people do live. Very advanced, very advanced uh, transportation systems. When I went in hypnotism to Atlantis, I saw a tubular structure. Like if you're going into... New York City into the train station or London into this train station. This would be like, uh, I looked at it as like a transport system, very advanced and people were like, there's a lot of people going in the train system. And when I was hypnotized, I saw the tubular structure that took people all over Atlantis to wherever they wanted to go. So Atlantis actually does exist on another frequency that we can't see it, but it's very much real. Um, so they'll never find it because it's in another frequency. In terms of Lemuria, the same thing exists uh lemuria exists also in another frequency so the the uh you know so in terms of your question uh what i'm sharing with you is a lot of the stuff you see on the internet on on tv documentaries are basically fear-based things of propaganda like on discovery on history they have a lot of programs on documentaries about ets but they'll always show pictures of them and even on here on on youtube right here on tiktok there's people guilty of the same thing, whether they're conscious of it or not. The images that people put of ETs on, on TikTok are looking negative, ready to kill people. That's what people show on here. And it's it's basically propaganda. They don't, they don't realize what they're doing. They might have well-intentioned meanings of what they're showing, but most of the negative things people show you, everyone's showing you negative ETs or people that look like they're ready to kill you. And that's not the case. That's misinformation. That's fear-based information. So when the positive star people come here, you're going to be afraid of them because they're projecting these things on, on cable, on TikTok, on YouTube. And all people show, I don't know why, is these faces of AI images of ETs that look like with the red eyes popping out and they're ready to get you. Don't believe any of that stuff, folks. I can tell you it's all propaganda some little messages in the photos, none of that's real. The majority of what's coming here to Earth are positive people from the Ashtar Command. I worked with the Ashtar Command. I worked with the Ashtar Command, the Christ of the Beings of Light, since before the internet even existed, before there was a YouTube or TikTok. So I know what I'm where I'm coming from, where I'm talking about. So in your question, Red, all the stuff that you see, if you see it on YouTube, on TikTok, with negative pictures of these evil aliens. Don't believe all that stuff or any of it, not that you do, but I want to educate people. A lot of that stuff is propaganda to get you mentally picturing something so that when the space people come, you're going to be afraid. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's all propaganda. It's all lies. It's not true. That's why I have this show here, because I have a background as a contactee, and I know a lot about the subject. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to clarify some things for me. Oh, yeah. I'll hop off, I'll hop off now. Let somebody else come. Uh, I'll let, and I'll let <laughs> Ghost answer, too. I'll let Ghost uh -huh. answer while you hop down. I'm going to let my friend Ghost answer. Uh, okay, and sure. uh, I'll, yeah, and then I'll let you hop down. Ghost, what do you say on that? I'll let, if he's still here. Ghost? Yeah, I'm here. I was just collecting my thoughts for a second. Um, That's okay. That's good. So I, I like to collect my thoughts before I answer something. Um, I always do that. Yeah. 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 Um, so with the collective like Christ consciousness, I had a question. Um, this goes for you, Commander, actually. Um, what is 
like Ashtar commands take on like using substances? Uh, they don't, I don't, they don't believe in using any substances. People, the one thing I mean, back in my college days, the most I ever smoked was, uh, uh, marijuana, you know, but that was back in the seventies. Uh, kind of like referring to, okay. You know, so I don't think there's something for that purpose. I don't think, uh, I've never felt anything about that from them, but when we talk about drugs, they don't want people taking drugs at all. Uh, I mean, that, I think that's a natural organic that can help people in some ways, but uh, in terms of the actual drugs that are out there, most people should be focusing on meditation, uh, keeping their temple clear. So from the Astro Command perspective, and I teach people this, your body is your temple. If you mess your temple up and you mess it up and clog it up, you can't get the information you need. If you clog it up, you're gonna get nothing. If you meditate, keep yourself clear uh, and focus and don't get drunk or drink and go crazy, that way, uh, you'll have a clear consciousness. And if you have a clear consciousness, you will be able to ascend your th consciousness to a Christ level to have understanding. So, you know, uh, do people that are, you know, maybe light workers or people that are trying to get to elevated consciousness to make contact with space people taking drugs and stuff? There probably are. But uh, I think it doesn't give them a clear indication of their contact. I think uh, people need to be clear. The bodies need to be clear. The consciousness needs to be clear. That's really my answer. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's just something that's really been bothering me lately. Um, no, I'm like getting closer yeah. to this eclipse day and I'm getting more information come across my desk. And yeah, yeah. Um, it's just something that's really been bothering me because I don't like want to miss out on this chance. You know what I mean? Because I made a yeah. bad decision. No, I teach people Focus. If you're not focused yet, ghost on Christ consciousness. Focus on it from tonight onward. Meditate in Christ consciousness. Listen to higher uh, ambient Christ consciousness music. You can get it pretty much on YouTube. There's a lot of great videos that have those frequencies of Christ consciousness. I teach people that in my workshops, and uh, I do a lot of things. So if you follow doing that, I believe, from my perspective of teaching people, you'll elevate yourself into a higher frequency where there is no fear, where there is no doubt, and you'll have direct contact with your star family. You know, if you're not having that contact, that is the way to allow yourself to get up to that alignment. So I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, man. It's, it's just, it's always good to have any little kernel of insight you can catch along the way from anybody. You know what I mean? Every, every piece of information is valuable. Yeah. Someone's saying plant medicine is okay, I think. I don't know what plant medicine is, all I will say is that from an Ashtar Command perspective, and they're listening to our show, the people on the spaceships right now are listening to our show, our star family. Uh, April knows that, and I know that. Um, and they're very intently listening to this program. So people might not be aware of it. We do have space people on the ships listening to our show. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter to me. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, it's really important that every single human being that really wants to get to that state of consciousness does it clearly with the intent of having a clear body and a clear mind in order to get yourself to that level. It's really very important. And, and uh, April saying there are natural remedies and crystal healings too. So when April comes back on next Friday on our Ashtar Command uh, program, you should join us on Friday night, next Friday at 11 o'clock. We're going to be having our Ashtar Command Q&A. Our space brothers on the ship will be with us uh directly and they'll communicate through music those two certain musical levels to share with us next uh, friday and that's our friday night contact with the ashtar command so we have contact with our star family on friday nights this friday we're not doing it but next friday we'll be going back and and doing it and ghost you're welcome and so is red you're welcome to join us and everybody out there please join us i mean just join us in, in general watching the show you found this show this is an actual show, and that's why we're, you know, doing what we do. We've been on here for over a year, and into this year, and a, going to a year and a half with the with the Ashtar Command Radio stuff I do on Sundays, and with encounters every, usually nightly, we're on here. So uh, at eleven o'clock. So I'm glad everyone's finding our show here on TikTok. All right. Well, Red, any other last words or? 
Ghost, anything no, you no, want to no, say? No, or? I, was say, I will join you next Friday. And uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm following you. And yeah, thank you for having me. And feel free to watch our shows nightly because we have all kinds of people. Sure. And we're, we're glad you, you asked your questions. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. That was Red. And we want to thank Red for being here. Any uh, final words? Uh, we have five minutes to one. We're going to sign the show off at one. Uh, let's see. Francisco, what would you like to talk about? Francisco, we, we'll take one more guest on here for tonight on the show, Encounters. Uh, Francisco, so let's see who's coming up here. We have Sharon and In Your World. Let me bring Sharon up. We'll bring Sharon up here. Hey, Sharon, good evening. Welcome to Encounters. Oh, Sharon went down. I don't think Sharon wanted to come up. <laughs> I get the distinct feeling. Uh, okay, I th think she wants to come up. I'm not sure. Sharon? Okay, maybe this time. Sharon, good evening. Are, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. Welcome oh, to the I'm show. Oh, I'm so sorry. I see that you were nodding, that you can hear me. Um, I can't hear you. Something's going on with TikTok. Um, you, you can can I ahead. just say really quick for Ghost? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there is a low vibration in the, um, the programming of guilt and shame. And I just want to caution anybody who's listening right now that guilt and shame is the lowest vibration that you can be in and drop it, right. drop right. it. There is no, there's no reason for us to feel guilty about anything we do. And if it, 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 if it's your journey, that is your journey. And there is nobody or no thing that can tell you what your journey is. And so if you feel a call to do better and to clean up your body and your physical vibration, do it, do it, but don't do it based on guilt. Do it based on, I'm going to raise my vibration. Right. Um, and again, my audio's messed up, so I'm going to jump down with that. I just wanted to say that raise your vibration and don't let anybody or anything tell you that you should feel bad about yourself because right. it or is you can't your it. personal right. journey. That's right. It always is. Well, can you hear me at all? I can hear you. She can't hear me. Okay. We'll drop her down. She can't hear me, whatever. I don't know what's happening there. Weird. Uh Okay, now this person says, I've seen something weird. I want to ask you a question if I, I'm allowed to. When you say you've seen something weird, I will bring you up here as my last guest. Uh, we're at 95.9, almost at 100,000. And uh, actually, Francisco, I can't bring you up. You don't have 200, 200 followers yet. You have 188 followers. So if people follow Francisco, he's just shy of 200. So um, we are kind of winding down the show. I want to thank uh, In Your World. Let's see here. I know a whole bunch of people want to come up here. I want to hold off until tomorrow night. I, I will promise we have four or five people trying to get on here. Uh, but the commander's been on here since 11 o'clock on the East Coast. So we're going 11, 12, almost two hours. So if you wish to be a guest tomorrow night, please, uh, we'll have people on tomorrow night after 11 p.m. And uh, I'll be happy to interview some more people. Ghost, any final comments uh, on your end there? Um, yeah, I just want to say, you know, peace, love, light, blessings to everybody. Be safe tonight. Uh, yeah. You know, try to. I'm not. I'm not gonna like put anything spooky out there, but I do know for sure. Another thing that I did want to add that we will be yeah. going through the photon belt at the same time that the eclipse is happening. You know, I know about the photon belt. Years ago, my good friend Athena with the Ashtar Command talked about us going through at some point the photon belt. Very interesting. Yeah, we'll have to it's get. We'll to have happen. to get into that. It's supposed to happen like the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, in those three interesting. Days. That'll be very interesting. So let's keep ourselves conscious of what's going on. Everybody stay centered. Regardless of what's out there, stay positive. Do your meditations. Do your uh, work to keep your vibrations up. Stay centered in peace, love, and understanding. And uh, let's move forward in a very beautiful way uh, as well. Hey, Ghost, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you have Thanks any other... Party. 
top secret information from the Pentagon or anything that we should know about, uh, I'm sure you'll be here. You'll be welcomed on our show as always. Everybody, thank you for the roses. Uh, let me see here. Am I, I have only, I've gotten six of eight hats. Uh, now I have seven hats. I have one more hat to go. Kit Kat, thank you. Uh, thank you, Yeah, Yeah Spirit, for the hat. I've reached my goal for tonight. I wish they had like, a, I wish they had a flying saucer or something. Uh, Francisco, we'll get to you tomorrow night and we'll have people follow you so we can get you up to 200 and we'll certainly have you on encounters. Everybody, thank you for being here. It's time for the commander to sign out of here for the night. We'll be on tomorrow night at 11 o'clock with another edition of the number one UFO spiritual talk show on social media, Encounters. TK, thank you. Everybody, thank you. Be blessed, be focused, and be ready for contact. Good night, everybody.